presidential candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, Robi Kwankwaso, has unveiled the party's presidential campaign council, or called the RMK PCC, noting that zonal rallies will begin on January the 12th. Addressing supporters of the party in Abuja on Monday, Kwankwaso noted that the NNPP is working around the clock to kickstart a campaign towards a new Nigeria that will take off May 29, 2023. Joining us to discuss this and more is Ladikwa Johnson. He is a spokesperson of the Kwankwaso Campaign Council. It's so good to have you join us, Mr. Johnson, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting that um, many other political parties had inaugurated their campaign council, but the NNPP uh, is just inaugurating its campaign council. Why did it take so long? Yes. Um, well, we have taken a different path. Um, each party has its strategies. Each candidate has it, his own or her own strategies. We... Um, what we've done is that the presidential cam um, candidate has taken a deep, um, penetrating tour of the country. He did this going almost um, senatorial district by senatorial district. He's covered about 400 local governments, um, some driving through, stopping to talk to people in marketplaces, some actually meeting with stakeholders. So we went the other way around. He's done this. In fact, in one of the places he stopped by in Sokoto State, he was told that um, the last presidential candidate they saw was um, the late chief of Bafemi Awolowo. So uh, we felt that it was necessary to go to the grassroots, to the people. Now, the, that means that people have been working. But this inauguration of the campaign council is um, a mere formality, really, because um, now he wants to do what the press has been, have been calling for, which is the big rallies in the cities. But you find that most of these rallies, most of the people there are your people, and then um, you go to this. That connection with you, Mr. Johnson, but if you can hear me. Can you hear me, Mr. Johnson? Mr. Johnson, can you hear me? Oh, I think that we lost that connection. We're going to have to get Mr. Johnson back on the line to continue this conversation. Stay with us. It's still Plus Politics, and we're still talking about the uh, NNPP camps, campaign council that has just been unveiled, and I guess is a spokesperson of the new Nigerian People's Party, um, NNPP, Mr. Ladipo Johnson. Mr. Johnson, before we went on the break, you were telling us about the NNPP strategy being different from every other strategy, and that's why you've taken this long um, to uh, create your campaign council. But let's talk about the campaign in itself. Um, like I said, many others are already having campaigns. They're moving their campaign trails from one place to the other. Um, there are many people who have described your presidential candidates as a Kanu state candidate, being that they say that is the only area that he's popular. Um, what's he doing to change that narrative as he begins his campaign fully? Well, you can see from the um, pictures that um, you're showing and we've seen all through, um, he's not just popular in Canada. The campaign in the party is around the entire country. He had the Kwanbosia movement around the entire country. I became coordinator of the Kwanbosia movement in Lagos in 2013-2014. Um, so the campaign and the party and the candidate has it spread around the entire country. Now, um, what we've done, as I said, is that with the presidential campaign, is gone round. And you find, you see, you see all the parties that have been campaigning. They've been going to city centers, having rallies um, with their own members, talking to them. Some don't even talk. They just dance on stage and leave. But Rabbi Musa Komozo has gone down to the grassroots He's gone round. It's only uh, only three states, I believe, that he hasn't been to. 
And then the campaign that you all both seem to understand as campaigns, um, we will begin those ones this week. The um, rallies um, in the major cities. We're beginning in the northeast, in Bochi, then we're moving to Kaduna for the northwest, and Latvia for the north central. Um, after that, he's going to honor the invitation at Chatham House, and when we come back, we'll continue with the campaign. So um, we're doing all that is necessary, and we believe that um, in the next two, three weeks, Nigerians will see that Rabiu Musa Kwankozo is more grounded, better grounded, more on ground than virtually any of the other presidential candidates. The reason I believe that this um, mistake is being made by the pundits is because intentionally, when he made all these moves, we didn't take the press along. Um, but you'll see the pictures from our platforms and um, videos released from our platforms. So we are confident that we have covered the ground and now we're ready to start the, um, the rallies. And um, Nigerians will see and will connect the, the messages together. And I believe um, by February 25th, we will see the result of the hard work that we have embarked on. Now, also talking about his campaign, how is uh, Rabbi Musa Konkoso funding his election uh, campaign? Um, a lot of people have asked questions around that and how is, because he presents himself as this very straight and narrow um, politician who has, a, in his words, a, a, um, a place in his heart for education and educating the populace so that, you know, it would be a springboard for all the kinds of development. But the question continually is, where is he getting his money to run for this election, knowing that running for this very revered office takes a lot of money? Who are his funders? We're curious. Well, I'm not sure that... Um, <laughs> I'm not so certain that... Um, his major funders were going to be named. But um, look, the Kwankosia movement and that um, principle has followed us into the NNPB, has um, basically been a movement of people sacrificing, volunteering um, for the campaign. Uh, oftentimes, my friends tend to say, well, what do you mean you're trying to pay for your flight? You know, you're, you're a spokesperson for a campaign. But the system we operate is different. We believe that we have to serve the people. Um, the, the slogan is Kwanpasea, and it is the answer is the mana, trust. And that came from the people. Yes, it must. It started in Kano, and it must start somewhere. It started from Kano, and it has spread round. So you find that... Um, Members are funding, friends of the candidates, and our friends to are funding at different levels. But just yesterday, we launched uh, an app for the campaign, and um, it is there, and people can um, get the account numbers and fund. Nothing is too small. So we believe that everyone can chip in, and as they do, they will be more committed to the um, fact that together we must bring about a better country and not rely on um, big business or um, big donors to donate and try to control um, those in government when they do get it. This is a very keenly contested um, presidential election, as you can tell. Um, your presidential candidate, um, um, it falls um, as part of the four top front runners uh, for this presidential uh, election. And as it's keenly contested as it is, Nigerians are interested in what separates him from the others. Um, every single person is giving us promises. Um, some even sound as, a, as an outlandish, as wanting to turn water into wine. But what does the Kwankwasia uh, what is the strategy, the campaign strategy or direction, or what's the trajectory that he's bringing to the table, and, and how believable is it? 
Yes, the first thing is that um, basically, uh, Marianne, what sets Konkozo apart is that um, he has the capacity. Mr. Johnson, are you there? Mr. Johnson, can you hear me? Oh dear. Uh, can you hear me, Mr. Johnson? I think that we have lost that connection once again. Unfortunately, these things happen, but we'll try to get Mr. Johnson back. Mr. Johnson, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes, I can yes. hear you. We, we lost that connection for a second. He has the capacity, competence, and the political will to get things done. Most of all, he brings to the table wide-ranging experience necessary for a time like this. Rabiu Konkozo was a civil servant for 17 years. He went to the Constituent Assembly. He was a member of the House of Representatives. He was Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives. He became Governor for the first four years. He became Minister for Defense at a time when insecurity is killing us. He became, after Minister for Defense, he was also um, a special envoy to Darfur and Somalia, showing, giving him international experience, diplomatic experience. He was also um, a governor again. Before that, he was on the board of the NDPC, um, representing the Northwest. He resigned from the board. Who does that in Nigeria? He resigned from the board because of things he felt were uncommonly and things he didn't want to partake in. And then he became governor again, as I said, and then went to the Senate for four years. Things changed so you when he... Did. I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson, I don't know if you can hear me. Resigning is one thing. I, I know that that's very laudable. But when he resigned, what steps did he take to make sure that things changed in that particular government agency that he resigned from? Because again, yeah. if we if we must he vote for him, then there has yeah. to be some precedence. Mary Ann, he was a board member. As a board member, if you resign, you tell the president why you're resigning, which he did. He wasn't the executive, and he couldn't have brought about the changes you are alluding to. So he had played his own part. You, you, you get what I'm saying? He's played his own part. And if you give him a chance, and Nigerians give him a chance, he will sanitize the system. So, and that is what we are asking for. Hmm. How do you... How do you... How do you intend to sanitize the system? Because you see, um, Nigeria, as we all know, has so many happen, so many things happening under the watch of, of course, of Mr. President. We're seeing that oil theft is on, yes. on the rise. You see, when I mentioned the things that go ahead, mentioned the things that were necessary, I spoke about apart from capacity, competence. I spoke about political will. The Kwanzaa ideology that we believe in, talks about leadership, leadership, and he has the leadership. You see, without that leadership, being constant and being fair to the people, you cannot bring about the change necessary in Nigeria. You're correct. There are many interests in this country. There are many people many groups, cabals and what have you, that wanted to be business such a man that is known not to be um, um, one who performs uh, with business as usual. He is an outlier. They know him. You will notice that the candidates have been tackling each other. No one has said so much about him because they know his track record. Okay. Um, quickly, before I let you go, Mr. Johnson, because uh, we're having connection issues, let's talk about the insecurity that many people are concerned about right now and the fear that there might be a cancellation of the elections, um, even though the federal government has stepped in to say elections will go as planned. 
Um, and, and your candidate talked about promoting peace and unity in the country. How does he intend to do this? Because the country, as it is, is already divided along ethnic and religious lines. And we're seeing acts of violence perpetrated not just against Nigerians, but against government facilities, the burning of um, INEC offices, and all kinds of things. We're seeing agitations from all parts of the country. Just a few days ago, um, a train attack, just almost similar to what happened on the Kaduna Abuja Express um, train, train uh, trail corridor, is also happened. Has also happened in Edo State. So. Again, whoever wants to be the president of Nigeria does have to understand what we're facing right now, and he has to give us solutions, play by play. So what is it that he's going to do about this? Multi-pronged attack. Multifaceted attack. Firstly, you look at the security situation. Now, inequalities have led to agitations. That is why you have the agitations. There's no fairness, there's no equity, we're more divided than ever before, and naturally you will have agitations for the Yoruba nation, for IPOB, etc. And also the fact that the economy is not in a good shape. You have people who are going turn into banditry, kidnapping, and what have you. So all these things mixed together have given us a terrible situation. And as you say, it will be very difficult for whomsoever emerges as president. That is why we need someone like him. But very quickly, what he intends to do is this. One, you look at the military, you look at the police. The military at the moment, you have about 250,000 to our population. The police at the moment, you have about 300 and something thousand men and women to um, police over 200 million people. The ratio is just not good enough. We are going to have a surge in the short to medium term to make sure that we have boots on the ground. When we have boots on the ground, then we can have forest guards, um, coastal guards, and um, um, border guards to strengthen the Navy strengthen the immigration, et cetera, et cetera. When you have that, one, you are creating employment. Two, you are ensuring that things like oil theft, the things that you're going to need to increase your revenue are stamped, are stopped. You have to have someone that has a political will. We in the NMPP understand that if we're unable to do that, if we do not have the will, to deal decisively with oil theft and other things like that, then gov the government will fail. The debt burden is so high. But if you look at it, if you look at what our quota is with OPEC, the fact that we're not even meeting up to that, and how... We have lost connection with uh, Ladipa Johnson, but unfortunately we have to let him go. Ladipa Johnson is a spokesperson of the Kwankwaso Campaign Council and a member of the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP. Well, we want to thank you all for being part of the show tonight. That's it on Plus Politics. Don't forget, go get your PVC. It's now being devolved to wards and registration centers. Go find out where your ward is or your registration center where you registered initially and pick up your PVC because you know what I say, it's a passport to the new Nigeria that you and I deserve. I'm Mariana Kun. Have a good evening.